welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox videos and we're continuing with servicing so the first thing we're going to do registration number you see that one fell off so uh, I'm going to mark this down on our sheet and I've got a torch for the uh, places that are a little bit darker because we will be crawling under the vehicle later right so I got myself a coffee as well I'll just have a quick swig before we get on Okay, so uh, going to the odometer, we'll get the mileage first, and that'll be MPH, and the tax. It's worthwhile just making a note of when it runs out. Okay, and then popping the bonnet up, we're going to have a look underneath at one of the VIN tags, which should be riveted to the brake master cylinder uh, here. Okay, you'll find it in different positions, a slam panel on a discovery. Okay, make a note of that because this is a reference you'll need to check with your documents to make sure it's all right. In the window screen of some vehicles you'll find that there's the VIN number here on a tag as well. You can see that clearly. Alright, that's for quick ID purposes. If you have a genuine chassis you should still have the VIN number stamped into the chassis leg here at the front on the driver's side. Okay, numbers clearly stamped. You might need a wire brush to clean it off. Make sure that this corresponds with the rest of the VIN plate on your vehicle. Right, also with this plate, you'll find that you have a gross vehicle weight, train weight, and two axle weights. You could tie yourself up in knots working out which weights you're allowed to tow with your vehicle, but the maximum authorized mass of the vehicle is 6,550 kilograms which is stated on this plate here. Jumping into the engine bay again, we're looking for the engine number. Now the 300 TDI will be here where you can see the white paint. Take a number of this and you'll need to check it with your documents to make sure that if you haven't checked before that it is right and it is legal because that is a requirement, especially if you go to sell it. The VIN number or vehicle identification number and the engine number are quite handy when you're ordering parts. Now I'm making a comprehensive list of everything I have on the vehicle. This is new to me, this vehicle, however if you have one that you haven't done this, this is worth doing first of all. It will save you a lot of time in the future. Now just when you thought we'd finished, well we haven't, we've only just started. We'll have to get down a bit lower and look at the tyres. Now you have legal markings all over the tyre which give you the information of the tyre and the rim. The rim should be stamped with a number. So I'm going to get this one first and this has actually told me that this is a discovery wheel rim which is not right for the vehicle to be honest with you. So we've already dug up one problem. Now with the tyre you have the tyre size, you have the weight and the speed rating on here. These are quite important because you can get caught out on an MOT with this make a note of it and do some research. Later on we'll be explaining about the tyre um, information. You have a little bit of information here for maximum load. And you'll see that S means a single rated which is one wheel or D for double which is two rated wheels together. Make sure you do this for all four or even all five of the wheels on your vehicle. I'm sure they're right but check them again. So the next job we're going to find ourselves having to clean off the numbers on the gearbox. And we'll start with the transfer box. You might have to use a wire brush in a manner like this and give it a good clean so you can get the numbers. They're positioned here for the um, later transfer boxes. And you'll also see near the drain plug the ratio for what the gearbox will be. In this case it's a 1.41 to 1 ratio. With a little bit of light you'll be able to see the numbers just there. Okay, that's my gearbox. And just to orientate yourself, this is the discovery box and you can see the number clearly there. And on older boxes they'll be stamped here. And you might well need a mirror to get in there into the side and have a look to catch the number after you've cleaned it off. So if I get the mirror up in there you'll see the number is stamped clearly. Now this is the location of the serial number for earlier LT230 transfer boxes. LT77 R380 gearboxes have a serial number stamped here which is on the driver's side next to the prop shaft 
bell housing and then the main gearbox. Again, you'll need a wire brush to clean off the grot and the rust so you can have a look and you'll be able to recover the number off here. This sort of number recovery, it makes it easier to order parts and identify the components that you have. So here you have 56A and a J suffix which will be an R380 gearbox. It's a bit grotty, we're going to wash it later, but now you know where the numbers are. Axles apparently do have numbers, they have serial numbers, and uh, if you find yours, let me know, because I can't find the ones on this. Alright, so what you should have is a comprehensive list of information that's uh, quite vital to identify what your vehicle has. Now, if you're doing any forum browsing, or you need any technical information, ordering parts, uh, gearboxes and such like you have this information ready and at hand so you can use it keep it safe somewhere keep it safe somewhere because you're gonna need to reference these as you follow on through these tutorials in our series <laughs>